Now I can welcome Dr. Christian Stefan from Kairos on the talk on AI or not AI, that's the answer, presenting COVID data net dot NRW, <laughs> or NRW. Um, Dr. Christian Stefan has been leading the growth of the Centra XX system at Kairos GmbH as managing director since 2012. He as a, he is a habilitated bioinformatician and initially performed research in neurology at the Heinrich Heine Universität in Düsseldorf. Um, after that, he went on to take over the management of the bioinformatics and biostatistics working group at the Ruhr Universität Bochum for more than eight years. Thank you very much for being here today. Yeah, thank you for your kind introduction. So, yes, my name is Christian Stefan, and I would like to show you not even more on really big AI problems we would like to overcome. Um, I would like to keep more the point on the problem on the data. To get these data, to get nice data, to get full data sets, and that's the main problem we have in healthcare. So that's the reason why I'm starting more from the data part. So of course there is no discussion about um, the new resources. So data are the new resources. You can build on, you can bike, you can send, uh, you can sell, you can whatever do with this. You can generate new products with it. So there is for all of these big companies no discussion um, that data is a new resource, a real resource within our uh, modern world. Um, but why does it take so long uh, for this to be understood, for become true in the healthcare sector? So if you go into the healthcare sector, so everything I have said before is not present there. So what does it mean? So the most used device in healthcare system is today a fax system. So, and if you know that each data that's within a fax is more or less unusable for you and for AI, then maybe you know my problem. And so if you go to them and say, okay, I have the solution for you, they say, no, we have everything's working. The fax is still working. Yeah, I know, but that's not the way we have to go in the future because we generated so many data each year or each time within the healthcare sector, but we not really use it today. So this means this huge amount of data is mainly untapped um, due to the unstructured nature. In some cases, not every data is in an unstructured way, that's right. But it's not easy to use for research and development of new products, of course. Um, that's maybe the, the point where we have also heard before about synthetic data. That's maybe true. I'm not sure if it is working for healthcare data at all, to find new insights and to build up new products as well. Um, so the main problem is as well within the healthcare sector, the problem of interoperability. So everyone is expecting that every practitioner, every clinic, every person who is responsible or is involved within the healthcare system is connected to each other. But maybe you know by yourself, if you're going to any kind of your practitioners and say, okay, so here I am, I'm ill, and he said, okay, what's your history? So he or her is not knowing anything else about your history um, to other uh, practitioners. So what is in reality? They have a lot of data in some cases, but not enough to make the right decision at the end. Of course, we can use AI, and I will show you as, for, as well as some examples, but we have to overcome many things prior to this to have good build-up AI models or decision support systems. We call this, in this place, decision, decision support systems because we don't want to substitute the practitioner itself. We would only want to help them um, with these kind of functionalities. So what we need in the beginning is the digitalization of of data, of course, within the healthcare system, you also will, will have this in mind that's already done. No, it isn't. There is enough clinics within Germany and the world who is doing their documentation by hand written on any kind of paper. And this is not digitalization at all. And you can't use this data anymore for any searching. So structuring is also one of the things because everyone is describing these to another physician 
in any kind of physician letter. So in words, in sentences, that's nice, that's okay. But it's not easy that any kind of machine is using this data at all in a structured way. And what we also have to do is that we have to use harmonizing as well. So there are still a lot of terms we can use um, for data analysis, but not everyone is describing it in the, in the same way. So they use different terminologies, vocabularies, other sentences to describe all these same things. So that's the problem and what we also think in this case it would be very easy to overcome and I will also talk about these uh, data protection problems. There are no problems and don't get me wrong, data protection is very important but in some cases overstressed. Um, and therefore it would be easy if we also include the patient itself. So if he is informed and gave us his or her consent then it's no problem to use this data at all. And, and that's the way where we have to go. So that's the reason why I'm asking what do most people die from in the healthcare sector or wherever. So the most problem I said is data protection. The most people are dying on data protection and why do I told you this? Because we could be even further with any kind of predictions, with any kind of rescue of people if we are using still even better this data that's already out there. So data protection, of course, is needed, that's right. But in most of the cases, it's a false argument. We have in some cases customers who told us uh, it is not allowed by data protection to change this pseudonymized ID. No, that's no problem of data protection. You can change, that's a problem of organization. But the data protection problem is not out there. Data protection is for identifying person by their data or by any kind of combination of data. That's right, but not for the organization of changing any kind of ID. If I make an ID to a person wrong, that's not good, of course, it's not totally uh, problematic, but it's no problem of data protection. And they say, so therefore we can't use the system, therefore we can't do any kind of data aggregation. And therefore, um, they would even more protect their own interest, just only to keep their data up into any kind of database for their own research but not for public research or for even more communication with others and share data with others to have even better research on data at all. So data protection must be, barriers must be overcome, not to kick out data protection, that's not the, the point, but we have to do it in the right way. So therefore it's important that we make data collection not as a blind position and, and get everything into any database, it has to be structured, it has to be a full data set if possible, and so therefore it's more clever, not blind to collect data. That's the point where we said not big data is, is all we need, smart data is what we need. So the right data set is what we need. So therefore we need as well the description of the patient at all as a movie of life, not only on a snapshot at one time point, and now I know he or she is ill, I need even more about the history. So then I can come to the point where we have prospective cohorts, we can focus more on the disease progression, not on the event where we are, but we can then have even better preventive as curative actions as well. So we need these kind of decision support for new therapies and of course, at the end, the most point is personalized individualized medicine at all that we need by doing this. However we do this, but very important is to overcome these interoperabilities. So we need the interoperability and the work together with many of these institutions. So over countries, not only in one country, that's also nice, but we have to overcome to get these big data sets at all, even more over countries as well. Um, so, and as well, we have also in some cases old systems and we have to talk about how could we get data from one system into another or even better, could we bring analytics, whatever it will be, statistics or AI, even better to the data, not the data to the analytics. And that's the main point we have to keep in mind as well. So, of course, I didn't, uh, it's not very important that I tell you what is AI, of course. Main most point is because in, in many of these talks I talk to physicians, 
it's the difference between statistics and AI that we have a learning model. Not everything is rule-based or is an only an, an algorithm. So we are trained data and we use data to train the model at all. And that's the misinterpretation uh, of AI. So nothing could be learned by this, of course, that could be learned, but not the end of the road could be learned right there. That's statistics, that's outlier detection, that's fine. The same correlation is not I. That works very well as well. In, in healthcare, this works as well in, in many kind of, of um, stocks or something like that. But the information itself is in some cases not directly at this point. There are other points impacting these kind of parameters or data as well. And that's the point where we need learning as well. So what are on the huge majority of data within the system, and maybe you know, Alpha or these these AlphaGo algorithm, um, who is training in in Go? That's the game, and it was more rule based in combination. That was the first one, who also beat the best Go master as well. But then they do the second step. They they take these AlphaGo first um, algorithm and make the second one, which only learning by playing against the other and start playing. And after three days, you also reach uh, the level of the first um, algorithm. And after 40 days, they say, okay, no one will beat these kind of algorithm. And if you transfer this to the healthcare sector, then it's not more or less a discussion about should be AI used as well in the healthcare sector. No, that's totally clear that we need this. So because why? Because we can't do that. This is a picture, it's total bad pictures, uh, with bad pixeling, and, but there are algorithms who can be come back to a photo, what was it be prior to this, and if you compare it to the ground truth, you can see, oh, that's really, really close. And there's no possibility that we will do this. Therefore, we need it AI as well. So, and also very important is that we are right now at the part where we have the right data, where we have, in some cases, as I said before, we have the right speed. And that's the point where we come to this knowledge. So now we are able to generate even more knowledge about diseases or disease um, uh, predictions as well. So one of these examples. So there was a publication on June 2016, and they would like to compare a distinct part um, of detecting breast cancer by machine learning and by humans. And it comes out that the AI performed well with 92%. Okay. And the humans were even better. They get 96%. And the conclusion was, okay, no, we don't use AI because humans are better. That's the wrong way. We have to combine them. So if we start with the AI and combine them with humans, then we come up to even better accuracy of 99.5%. So we won't substitute any kind of pathologist. We would like to have more time to look at the right place or the, the certain disease or the problem that comes out maybe. So and that's the point where we started this project. That's a very simple project. Starting at this, nine. People are dying each day in travel or traffic every day. But maybe you don't know, around 160 persons are dying each day on sepsis. And sepsis is one of the causes of bad COVID-19 uh, disease. But we have these as well of each other flu. We have this as well on each other bacteria infection as well. So they are dying so many people each day. And the physician couldn't tell us so who will be survived the next 30 days? That's the only question we would like to answer with this. And what we have done is we collected many, many data out in a hospital of these sepsis patients. We know them, they're going bad, but we couldn't tell if one of these is more or less dying in the next 30 days. And even worse, we also do not know if they survive these sepsis and going out, 35% of these patients are still dying again in the first year after sepsis. And we do not know why, and the physicians also do not know why. And what we have done is we don't want to use it 
a system with any kind describing in the Im immune system, if you're going this way and that way, no, we don't do. We take all out these data, trained an NI model, and come to this point um, where we have this area under curve of 92% um, um, to predict even more who will die within the next 30 days. We do not tell why, of course, we have some of these parameters, we know why this happens, and also gave it to the physicians, but what we say is keep an eye on these guys, not the other ones, they seem even good and will go out after 30 days and it will be fine, but these guys are the bad guys and will be maybe die within the next 30 days. And that helps the physician enough to focus on the things they have to do. So, AI will, or saves life, today as well. So big data can support the development of these successful AI system as well in, in research, um, in the medical part. And it's very important that we have this pseudonymized data that also in some cases of, of findings that coming out of these data and are not known for the patient, it is important to come back to the physician and say, okay, I know this pseudonymized person X, Y, Z will have a trouble within the next five years about whatever. And that's a very important part where we have also to keep in mind this pseudonymization will help us to use even more data sets all over different people. So at the end, I have some wishes, of course, and we need, and I only stress this point, I think so enough that we have the right semantics, the structuring, the digitalization at all. And um, it's totally clear that there's no question if, but only when AI will help us to even make better healthcare or public health system as well within Germany or the world at all. So there I am, maybe closely in time, I think so, hope so. And uh, if you have any questions, so please, now's the time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the audience so far? Thank you very much for your talk. Oh, perfect, there's a question. Hi, um, is there any movement in the development that is more infrastructure for um, yeah, record this kind of things. I remember that the most health data is recorded by big American um, companies like Apple and so on. Um, is there something going on in the, let's call it public sector or healthcare sector? Um, yeah, it's even more or less funded um, by, the, uh, by several ministries within Germany as well. So we have these medical informatics initiative. This was one of the things that is uh, financed by 150 million euros. You think so, it's a lot of money that isn't. If you get in, in mind that we have out there uh, more than uh, 35 different university hospitals, and if you count it to these university hospitals over time, and this was over 10 years to spend this money, that's not so much. And we have again another uh, funding uh, called Krankenhaus Zukunftsgesetz. There is 4.3 uh, billion euros spent to this. So the problem is that in, in these kind of um, hospitals, really old software solution is used. So they're mostly from the 90s. So if you compare it to Apple or Google, um, so there wasn't there, of course there was there, but a really, really small and different system, but they use really old uh, software solutions to do so, and it, this makes it easy. There is no interoperability at all at these systems, and that makes it really difficult. Thank you. And I also think that it also makes it difficult in terms of data protection, of course. Are there any more questions from the audience? Oh, over there. <laughs> Feel free to state your name and your company. Uh, hi, I'm Ralf, a senior data scientist at MindPeak. So maybe you've seen the talk, we work with uh, these histopathological images uh, and we detect cancer and you talked about data protection. So data protection prevents me mm -hmm. from knowing uh, any metadata from the histological images that I'm looking at. The argument being made is that this would make the patient identifiable and you know, then I would no longer be able to freely work with this data. But I think it would be very useful to have access to this. So do you have recommendations for 
for that. I have a recommendation. As I said before, the most people are dying on data protection, but not the data protection itself, the interpretation of it. So there are possibilities to do so as well within the clinics. So what you have to do is then go into the clinics and do it right there at the clinical system. But there, there are the data already stored. You don't want to look to any kind of these pathologies uh, letters written out there, you would like to only analyze them automatically. That's the point. Or in some cases also um, the imaging um, that you in some cases get out there. It's very important that you only train your data. And that's the point. So go into the clinics, make the analytics, uh, analytics right there, and then you come up with the build model and use it anywhere else. So that's maybe the way we have to go. But also we have to overcome these more or less yeah, problems about data protection, misbehavior on, on data protection. Data protection is, as I said before, important, but in most of the cases, it's not argued right. Yeah, okay, it's a little bit difficult with our setup. Of course, we want to bring all the data into a central uh, data lake and then you yeah. know, combine it from different data sources, but thank there you. There are some anonymization or pseudonymization services to do it as well within imaging or yeah. uh, physician letters, but it has no 100% uh, success. And therefore, when then we came back and said, okay, no, that, that's not possible to do so because we have 0.1% of maybe um, identifying information that's still out there. That's the problem we have. So nothing could be done if from 1 million only, what is it, uh, 1,100 um, letters are uh, may be identifying, but you would only to train, you, you wouldn't keep there anywhere or would like to, to identify these patients. You would like to train your AI. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any more questions from the audience? In that case, I also want to thank you because it really put things into perspective in comparison to synthetic data yeah, that we heard a talk on just before.